cool. Center's still dry. Oh, cool. I didn't expect that. So here we have all of our fasteners and oak and pine and saltwater samples. And they've sat for a bit over a month, so we would expect a little bit of a reaction out of them at this point. And just by looking at the color from our control of plain oak to our hodgepodge of fasteners, I would say something's going on because that salt water is a little different color than it used to be. Um, but yeah, now we can go through these one by one. So here we have our oak, which is just oak and salt water, and that's our control. And we split it open. Actually, unbelievably, it was dry inside. So that was the outer face looking at the end grain. And that is the face that we cut and split. And you can see that the moisture after a month had penetrated the end grain a little bit, but had not gotten all the way through, which is kind of wild. I did not expect for the oak to resist the water that strongly. If this had been red oak, which its capillaries are open instead of closed, like in the white oak, it would have soaked right through. This whole thing would be completely wet inside. But that was kind of neat to see. And you can see that other than making it wet, the salt water has not had any adverse effect on the oak. It's just darker where it's wet. And now we have oak and stainless steel. We can open that up and we can see that there's virtually no corrosion whatsoever. There's a little dark coloring there. And I wonder if possibly that's the beginning of the oak and the tannins attacking the iron in the stainless steel and causing some iron sickness but it's still way too early to tell. And the fact that the wood is basically dry inside also, you know, it hasn't had that salt water there to be a conductor. So these experiments definitely need to sit for a lot longer before we open up again. But stainless steel and oak seems to be behaving pretty well. Okay, and here we have oak and galvanized steel. And we can see that here, same thing. The, uh, like the stainless steel, it looks pretty good. This black stuff is actually from the bandsaw blade. Um, but right around where the nail is, everything looks pretty good. You don't see a lot of corrosion. Um, so this galvanized we would expect to last quite a while unless the galvanization was damaged. So if hammering it in, you knock some galvanizing off the top of the nail head, you expect that to start to rust first. Um, but so far that looks pretty good. And here we have oak and bronze, which is what our backbone is basically going to be put together with. And same deal, we can see a little bit of corrosion from the bandsaw blade there, but that bronze is perfectly shiny and you don't see any corrosion around it, which is great. And that's what we would expect, honestly, from the bronze and the oak if you were to cut it open 80 years from now, to our understanding. They behave really well together. Okay, so this is oak and just regular steel. And this is where things start to get interesting. Um, the steel is not nearly as corrosion resistant as the stainless steel or the bronze or the galvanized nails. And oak and steel, any non-ferrous metal, don't really get along. You get iron sickness. So if you notice, this jar is darker than the others. And then we have this black streaking that's coming through the end grain. And that's classic iron sickness. And you can see there, iron sickness around where the bung was. And that's where the water was getting in because uh, we didn't seal the bungs in any way. And if we open it up, you can see after just a month, and remember these samples are pretty dry. There's not really getting much moisture in there. All the moisture came in along the bung, and then as the screw has started to corrode, it's allowed more moisture in. And that is just a perfect classic example of what iron sickness looks like. You can see it's just radiating out, and in time, this wood will just turn black and goopy and totally disintegrate. Um, so not only do you have the corrosion with the mild steel, but you have iron sickness on top of it with the oak. Now if we compare the oak and the steel to pine and steel, we get a very different picture. So you can see in the pine, it still leaks at the bung and still got some corrosion on the screw, but not nearly as much corrosion, not nearly as much streaking. And that's because of the tannins in the oak that are interacting with the screw. And that's part of the reason that stainless steel, some varieties of stainless steel and oak have kind of a spotty history is because those tannins in the oak will start to ex attack the steel that's in the screw and it'll start to degrade the screw and you'll start to see iron sickness. 
All right, so this is our last sample. And on all the previous ones, we were just looking at the interaction of the fastener and the salt water and the oak, or in the one instance, the pine. And here, we're looking at not only those metals interacting with the salt water and the oak, but those metals interacting with each other. And we can see that the water is really dark and the wood is basically black. Things have not been going on nicely in here. So if we open it up, we can see the stainless steel screw looks pretty good. And then if we come over to where the other fasteners are, we can see that this um, sheetrock screw here, this plain steel screw, is getting eaten up pretty quickly by the galvanized nail and the bronze screw next to it. And we can see that this has even more iron sickness than the uh, just the sheetrock screw in the oak. Um, and that's due to the increase of the galvanic action, which is making that corrosion happen that much faster. And as this screw corrodes, it lets water in, and then that water starts to follow those paths of um, iron sickness and corrosion in the wood. And eventually, this whole timber will just fall apart. And this is much wetter inside than any of the other samples. And I think that's because this screw is so much farther corroded that that water has another entry point. So this is why it's really bad to mix metals inside of a wooden hull. So those are our samples from our pieces of oak and the fasteners. So we set these up where we can do this one more time. So we're going to let these sit for, oh, I don't know, at least the next six months since the oak is actually not even wet inside. And see if the corrosion gets worse, see what happens, see how it all progresses. Um, but so far it's been a pretty interesting, although not terribly scientific, but still interesting and informative experiment so far.